Um, I'm not going to lie, I was sat by the radiator and it's kind of warm and so I'm kind of sleepy. Um, so if you guys at any point see me yawning, just like cheer me on for no reason. That would be really great, just wake me up. Um, so like Steve says, he has thousands upon thousands of photos on me. And I feel as though if he makes a flyer out of them, it'll be like like an anti-UKIP little flyer. <laughs> like, it's really, really piss me. I, I wouldn't understand the, the manifesto behind it, but I'd vote for it. So um, I'm here, um, it stays, what, Brexit day, Article 50 day, two years to go, and then you're all screwed. I'm fine. I have got a Ghanaian passport. Not in the EU, but it's nice, it's tropical. No more Alex Safbridge, no, no. Coffee à moi. I'm going, I'm gone. And so I'm going to talk to you about something that's really plagued me my entire life as a scientist. Um, it's about really the fact we're on a boat, you know, water outside, it's hell. <laughs> Why large outdoor bodies of water can go fuck themselves? I don't like water. Water, to me, it's the big unknown. You know, we've seen space, but water, it freaks me out. So, like I said, I love Ghana. It's a lovely place to be when this place gets a bit too xenophobic. And this is one of my favorite restaurants because they've got the side that you can't see, but they've got crocodiles. And those crocodiles, right, they live under the water, they come out, and they have weaver birds on the top, and it's this beautiful duality, yeah? Because the weaver birds, they, they weave their nests sort of circularly, hang from these wonderful trees. And any of the birds that don't make their nests, like, perfect, fall into the water, just glide on the air. And the way the nests fall are great for, like, two seconds before the crocodiles just snap them up. And it's, it's the circle of life. I remember my dad taking me there, um, and my mum being against it, because I don't know if you can see, but that's big enough for an eight-year-old to crawl through. <laughs> she was against it. And, like, to me, going to Ghana, I've always seen amazing things. This is another place, uh, Buzwa Beach. And I, I like the sea. I like, uh, for all intents and purposes, I like swimming in the sea. But every time I feel something hitting me in the leg, like, it, it messes me. Yeah, exactly. It messes me. It's, it's a weird feeling, because you don't know. You don't have that time to look down. Because you know, you've got the Atlantic current coming here, the Bight of Benin further on, so things get swept in. And I know it's just a rubbish bag, but to me, it's a fucking blobfish. I don't know what it could be. You know, and a blobfish is meant to look really amazing under the water, but at this depth, it looks ugly, which is sort of how I feel being on the stage. I can justify myself to you that really, it's these lights. I am paying. <laughs> and so, you know, thinking about this, I think, ah, oh, man. I, oh, it's not I'm scared of that, I'm really scared of snakes. And the fact is, snakes can swim. Do you guys know that? All snakes, you guys knew that? I didn't fucking know that. <laughs> snakes can swim. All right, the only difference between land snakes and sea snakes, sea snakes, sea snakes, is that sea snakes can swim backwards. <laughs> Those guys have got it on lock, yeah, it's the same. I know, she's in the front line, what? <laughs> what kind of taxonomic function is this? It's, no, it's mental. And so, like, and to me, that, that, that really, really fucked me up. But nothing's fucked me up more than this little bastard. It's a little catfish. It's called the Kandiru. Uh, and hold your breath there. If you know what's coming up, shh, shh, calm yourself. The Kandiru, like, it seems unassuming, right? It's just, it looks like something that you would get in your Chinese meal and you think, oh, do I want to? No, maybe, oh, oh. And I'm looking at it, and I think, why is it so bad? Well, scientists have had a long, long-running myth about it, a long-running feud about it. Can anyone guess what it is? They've published papers on it. On the alleged blank by the Amazonian catfish. It lives in the Amazon. Chris, anyone? Anyone? What do you think the, it does? What it does? No. What? What? It, it, that's right. It penetrates the human urethra. Yeah. Allegedly. But this is published, so, you know, it must be fact. And so, like, so this, this all came around in the early 1800s by uh, a German, German biologist, French biologist. I don't actually have to learn the names. That's one of the benefits of Article 50. I don't, I don't have to know their names. I don't have to learn anything about them. I just know their nationalities and that they might have been wrong. So here, you can't read it here, but they see that you know, the worst thing about it is that it penetrates sometimes into the anal and urinal apertures of men and women bathers and there erects the terrible spines which oppose all efforts to extract it, then causing terrible disorders if it is not gotten out with the greatest care. This is my favourite bit. I have personally <laughs> known already three cases of this curious accident, but there's nothing in there. If you read through this paper from the you know, 1800s, 1900s, there's no drawing of it. There's nothing. 
There are plenty of drawings of the fish, but nothing of a dude going, What the fuck? <laughs> And that, that, I don't know, it messed me up. Just the thought of it. And, ugh. And, you know, they claim that, so these geologists, they, they went round the river and they spoke to local people. Um, of course, not in their native language, no, they just sort of shouted them in German and French. And, you know, they, from this, they managed to claim that they, you know, it's very dangerous to urinate into the river because, in the locals allege, this little animal launches itself out of the water and penetrates the urethra by ascending the length of the liquid column. <laughs> Right, have you guys... Okay, uh, how old are you guys don't look old? It's cool, you, this pop culture reference will not be lost. It's like Free Willy. <laughs> but the thing is, it doesn't... Like, it's just with the mouth. So, okay, biophysics aside, it's got to... It's got to go up the stream. It's got to go up the stream faster than the stream itself, because the stream, otherwise, it turns into droplets. Anyone who's pissed on an electric track will know. Um, that's, like, not how I get my jollies, anyway. Um, it doesn't matter, because between Canesham and Bath isn't electrified yet. I live in the West Country now. It's weird. Um, you know, and it's got to do that. It's got to go up against gravity, air resistance, and it's got to get into the urethra without hands. It's like trying to dunk a basketball with your face. Uh, uh, a similar, like, a good, a good, another reference. It's sort of, it's spikier than Sonic the Hedgehog, and you've got to collect all of the rings, all of the painful, painful rings. It's like that. So, let's, I mean, so there's only been one case that's actually got video proof. Uh, I haven't been able to find it, and it's made my Google search history a bit weird. But, okay. And so, they allege that, from this video, right, the guy says, okay, yep, the doctor did the surgery, we found this, this fish, it's about 10 centimeters, 11 centimeters long, yep, we extract it, look, here it is, non formaldehyde, and here's the guy who's suffering from the pains in his privates. Um, so let's, yeah, it definitely happened, and the guy got a bit of fame, but no one's really been able to say, yes, that definitely happened. We're gonna need to do some maths here, just to work out if it, uh, guys, don't seem so like, sad in like, come on, it's Article 50, you've got 730 days, all of you need to have at least a C in GCSE maths to get any job. Work with me here. So look, just basic penis maths. A volume of a cylinder, right, is pi r squared times height. If we assume that 11 millimeters in the length of a, the candira fish uh, for the diameter, and 13 centimeters for height, and then the penis, this is a penis, um, I put Donald Trump's face on it just because. <laughs> That's how I get a laugh from you guys, sick. Now, like, cool. So I'm not gonna go through the maths because you guys are looking sad, but what we work out is it is possible. If you squish the candiru, right? If we assume it's a cylinder, a perfect cylinder, and we squish it, it can, in fact, sort of maybe at a push, just about eventually with maybe two or three centimeters get into the urethra, maybe, just, just maybe, just maybe. There'll be a bit of a overflow, but just maybe. But th there's, no, there's no hands. You, there's, uh, that's what gets me, that there are no hands. So what you're saying is, you've actually gone, like, you've, you've pissed so close, you've had to go to the Amazon, right? You had to go so close to it, right? Get down low. Uh, close enough, close enough that this thing has minimal, because I don't expect it, it's not Michael Jordan, it can't like jump like two meters. It's gotta go that low, right? For you to get up there, and then for it to be able to do it with that mouth, with just its mouth, and to get its, its claws, its, its sort of its horns at the side in, all right? And so it does that, right? And then it gets so far in that it has to be extracted, uh, by a doctor. Now you can't just go, oh, there's a fish at my penis, I'm going to remove it, that's bad. No, it, it gets, so you were obviously quite drunk, I get it. Um, and so, to me, I think, okay, that's, that's obviously impossible because there's nothing, uh, any, there's, there's, there's no chance that could happen. There's, I mean, and of course, there are no fish that actually have uh, hands, right? <laughs> so this is the pink hand fish from Australia. It's a lot bigger than a candira, right? And, uh, but you can see it uses its hands to grow, to sort of glide along the floor, for the uh, Australian, Tasmanian seas around there. And uh, it, as, I, as I've been able to find out, is one of the only fish that would be able to open the urethra, <laughs> and it would be able to at least get one of its flippers in, okay? <laughs> just one, like a really weird BDSM ax, just, so, what I'm leaving you with is that it, it's the, the sea is a really fucked up place, but it's okay and because you know, a lot of places do not have hands and the ones that do have hands are Australia. And as we all know, Australia has a points-based system, so I'm fine. <laughs>